You know you're not listening to anything I'm saying? Hang on, he can see over here. Just about the whole time Ed was getting called out for cheating, he was thinking to himself, do you mean at the game or on Liz because I've done bull? Ed actually got super butthurt when the other cast members were accusing him of cheating, even though he was. <laughs> don't cheat, big guy. But y'all don't say that. So that's cheating, huh? Yeah. This is therapy. I studied the course. When this happened, we were all confused at it because what's the point of denying that you're cheating when your own fiance is telling everyone that you cheated at this game? We can all tell that you can see. Ed even went as far as to cuss out Kelly and Jovi when they accused him of cheating. Later in the evening, these five terrible couples met up with the therapist to evaluate their behavior during the activity. During this group therapy session, Ed admitted to cheating and the rest of the cast members all cheered because he was denying it for a long time and it got super annoying. I had a focus, I had a goal and I was going to do whatever I could, you know, to win. And that's why I cheated. Ed's especially starting to get under Kelly's skin because when another man calls you a bitch, you want to punch him in the face, especially when he looks like Voltorb from Pokemon. Imagine a bouncy ball calling you a bitch. <laughs> We're all here trying to work things out, and I don't think he's taking anything serious. I'm pretty sure we would all like to see Kelly unload on Ed, not just physically, but verbally as well. After all these years of Ed being cringe on the internet, there's a lot of things you could have hit him with, Kelly, and I feel like you were a little too passive at this time. As we watch Ed cheat at a therapy game, it's clear why he's so bad at everything, because he'll take any shortcut to get to where he wants to go without actually doing the work. And when he admits to cheating, Liz is so proud of him all of a sudden. I'm no, happy that he was honest, yeah. and now it's changing yeah. my like attitude and body language and all that. Like I just I feel, see it. I feel better already. Yeah, Liz, do you feel better that Ed admitted to cheating on the game, even though he didn't take it serious when you're at therapy and this is a game to work on your communication and for the therapist to get a good read on how you communicate? That was the whole point of the game, so he wasted your time and everyone's time, but you're proud of him for telling the truth? It shows progress that you did admit to cheating. It shows, like, like, I'm proud of you. Thinking caps on, even though Ed admitted to cheating, he didn't apologize to everyone for wasting their time because he wants attention. That's the huge difference between Ed and Liz. Liz is there to work on their relationship and Ed is there to use it as a stage to act really cringe to get more famous. Ed's also one of those guys that has to make every single conversation about himself. And for those types of humans, you're not fun to be around. Ed takes off his pants, gets in the hot tub with Liz. And then when Angela turns the corner, he flashes her. What the hell is going Hello? on? Hello? This ain't a hot tub. This is my bathroom. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yikers, yeah, to make matters even more disgusting, the dirty bird flashes back with her disgusting breasts. Well, since you did that, how are they? <laughs> Are we surprised? This is probably how they greet each other in inbred land or whatever sewer these creatures crawled out of. I can only imagine the horrors of being an innocent guest staying at this resort and seeing the private parts of these sick bastards. I would sue. The only good thing that came out of this scene is Angela confirmed what we already knew. Ed has a small wiener, which is why he acts out so much for attention. What's the medical term? Small dick energy? Kelly and Molly pull up, Ed grabs his swim trunks, puts them on, and then basically him and Kelly start barking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Their argument gets to the point where Ed is daring Kelly to get in his face because he knows Akito. Ed might as well have said, I'm the Avatar, because any normal sized man beats the brakes off him. This entire argument started because Ed inserted himself in every single conversation that Molly and Kelly were having because he wants to maximize his TV time. Kelly picked up on this and pointed out that Ed talks over people and always makes conversations about himself. And then Ed said, no, I don't. I don't do that. And he got all butthurt about it. But that's the fact of the matter. You do do that. Do you not get a lot of attention? Because I get a lot of attention. Ed then once again cusses out Kelly for calling him a cheater, which is ridiculous because Ed admitted to cheating. At this point, Ed was so irritating that I'm actually surprised Kelly got up out of the tub and removed himself from the situation because the majority of us would have slapped the fuck out of this little freak. Angela says, you admitted you cheated and they knew you cheated, so why are we still on this subject? Well, Tar Nation, that's a great question, Dirty Bird. You're still on this subject because when someone is trying to hold Ed accountable, he tries to twist it into... They're bullying me, which they're not. 
They're being real with you. You can't handle the truth, which is why you act like a little bitch. Now, because Ed and Angela talk over everyone, Liz tries to get a word out and she says, uh, Angela, hold on. And Angela says, don't you point that finger in my face. So it's okay for you to point your finger at everyone and yell at everyone and raise your voice, get in people's faces. But the minute Liz just waves her finger up because she wants to say something, you perceive that as an attack and threaten her. In what way, shape or form is Liz just holding up her finger because she wants to say something a threat to you, Angela. It's not. You perceive it that way because you already don't like Liz. You have a vendetta against Liz because you see yourself in Ed because you're both pieces of shit. This says, you admitted that you cheated, Ed, and now I'm gonna be in the wrong for not defending you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is foreshadowing. Ed tells Liz that she's not going to be in trouble for not defending him and then proceeds to go off on Kelly. Pay attention to that because this is gonna come back later and he's gonna pick an entire fight with her about how she didn't defend him when he was ripping on Kelly. Dude, she doesn't need to defend you or agree with everything you say. As your partner, it's not her responsibility to defend you unless someone's coming at you the way that Angela comes at Liz later in the video. We're gonna talk about it. Ed says, Kelly, you both jumped on me, so I'm gonna jump on you. Guess what, Kelly never jumped on you, Ed. He pointed out that you cheated in a therapy game like an immature kid, which you did. I'm not a grown man baby. Are you saying I'm a man child? That's not jumping on you. That's just pointing out facts. What you're doing right now is jumping on him. You have a very inflated ego and you can tell by how you respond to criticism. And Kelly then reminds Ed that he never jumped on him and then Ed calls him a bitch for the second time, which makes everyone in the hot tub go silent. And they're thinking to themselves, is Kelly about to knock out Ed? Because once again, Ed just made hot tub time super awkward. Kelly's had it up to here with Ed. He looks like he's about to give him the two piece combo, but instead he decides to show mercy. Once That's again. All right, I'm out. Crazy. I'm done. Kelly, please don't I'm go. done. Kelly, please don't I just go. told this guy don't call me a bitch and he's gonna call me a bitch, so. Something we've noticed about Kelly is that he will often shy away from uncomfortable situations, which is relatable for a lot of people. However, here, I think it's a good idea to get out of the tub because there's no reason to stay and argue with the moron. You're not gonna change Ed's mind. Kelly then says to the audience, look, I didn't come here for problems, but if Ed keeps disrespecting me and Molly, I ain't with all that. Kelly goes on to say that he was a Brooklyn cop for a number of years and he doesn't play all that. And when he says this, I'm just confused because dude, why didn't you just cuff Ed? Like, you should have cuffed him and thrown eggs at him. That would have been so funny for us. Kelly says to the audience that he's here at this couple's retreat to work on him and Molly's relationship. He's not here to bicker with Ed. Ed then says, sorry, I didn't mean to call you a bitch the second time. So you meant it the first time? Gee, thanks, Ed. When Ed's mid talking shit, something great happens. Angela recognizes that he's being a little bitch right now. So she splashes water in his face and tells him to shut up, which is the best thing that she's done on one of these TV shows. Yes, one, one, one finger looking good scene. Let's get a look at it again. But in slow motion. Ed thinks he's the avatar, but he just got water bended on by Angela. <laughs> the funniest thing happens next. So Kelly and Molly are leaving the tub because they've had it with Ed. Liz asks Kelly to get her a towel and he says, nah, have your man do it. <laughs> Ed turns his whole body because he can't just turn his neck and says, oh wow, that was rude. You've been rude to Kelly this entire conversation, which is why he's leaving right now. I'm gonna step in because I've always been for the underdog and I've always understood people like Ed. What, since when has Ed ever been the underdog in his entire life? If anything, people at first feel sympathy for this thing because he doesn't have a neck. So they try to be nice to him and then after talking to him for about a minute, you find out that he sucks. Are we even surprised that the two cast members that are the most hated in the 90 Day Fiance franchise have formed an alliance? And I think Kelly was going too hard at him, you know? And uh, Liz wasn't taking up for him, so somebody had to. Angela raised a child molester and abuses her husband on national TV, so when I see her give a pass to the one dude that was whack in this situation, I'm not surprised. The only friend of the Dirty Bird that we want to see her beat up is Ed, so read the room, Flitzer. Surprise, surprise, after Kelly and Molly leave the hot tub, Ed turns to Angela and tries to convince her that he's the victim, not Kelly. Ed, I can't keep taking up for you when you put your foot in your own damn mouth. But he comes at me. No. They, they're coming at me. And Ed, that coming at me. I know again. a lot of people do. And the night's over. The only thing Kelly did throughout that entire conversation was point out that Ed cheated in a therapy game and that he talks over everyone. So for his ego to be that fragile where he lashes out like that because a dude is being honest with him just shows where he's at in life. And obviously Angela's at the same place. They dumb. I know better. Like I know when I need to keep my mouth shut, but that probably has a lot to do with my past. I've been bullied 
all my life, and I've never really had anybody to stand up for myself other than me, so. <laughs> I've been bullied my whole life. What a lame excuse. We've all been bullied at some point in our lives. It doesn't excuse your toxic behavior at 57 years of age. Grow up. This is how he probably wanted us to react. Oh, well then everything's excused, Ed. That's why you went to the Philippines and used Rosemary Vega for sex and made her a bunch of false promises because you were bullied as a kid. That makes so much sense, man. I can relate because when bad things happen to me, I just want to spend 57 years of my life hurting other people, especially women, because I'm too small to take on men. I don't think I did this intentionally, but his target demographic is incels that hate women. <laughs> I'm actually completely touched by the fact that Angela's actually sticking up for me. I mean, if Angela has my back, why can't Liz? Just because you're engaged to Liz, it doesn't mean that she has to back up all the cringe shit you do and say, especially because earlier you you told her that she didn't have to involve herself or defend you. Remember that? Now you're going back on your word and trying to paint her out to be the villain and say she didn't defend me. I'm Ed with a little penis and I'm a victim. And speaking of cringe shit you say or do, that's one of the reasons why your daughter doesn't talk to you anymore because you're embarrassing, bro. Yo, Liz is mad tired right now. Look at her face for God's sake. She looks so drained. So she decides to leave these two to feed each other's egos all night. She wants nothing to do with it. I should have done God it. Ass on that girl. <laughs> no, she's mad at me. But I don't know why, because you were standing up for her and you, so I, I'm Maybe is there any more talent? It really doesn't take a little Einstein to recognize that Angela has a clear vendetta against Liz, because that fight between Ed and Kelly had nothing to do with her. You two talk. Okay. No, you talk with your can't your talk, and I'm sorry, I love you, Angela, but you speak over everybody. Oh, bitch, don't go there, mother Oh great, clap it up for the dirty bird, walking up on Liz like she's still on the Murray show. All Liz said was that, Angela, you talk over everyone, and that's a fact. Angela's coming at Liz so aggressively, meanwhile she just offended Ed for calling another man a bitch multiple times. Ew, look at Angela, she's disgusting. She's built like a fridge, walking up on Liz, pointing her finger in her face. No, 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 don't apologize, you got the right one now. Don't you f don't walk away now. I'm not Ed, I'm not Ed. I took up for you and Ed, do not. I am being very calm. Listen, if you're gonna run that mouth, you back. I don't deserve what you just said. What time is it, Fade 30? I don't care if you're on a TV show or not. The minute that a big woman that looks like a crackhead and behaves like a crackhead gets in your girl's face, starts pointing and cussing her out, you better come up and do something. Defend your woman and worry about the consequences later. That was Molly. No, bitch. Okay. That was Molly and Kelly. So why don't you walk your brave ass and tell them that? See what Molly tell you. Right now at this point, if it's any other dude, this is not happening. The fact that Ed is allowing this to happen and actually enjoying it is disgusting. Liz goes on to tell Angela that the only person that's angry right now is her and she tries to walk away, but Angela's like a hunting dog. She chases after her. And the craziest part is that Liz didn't provoke Angela at all, but she's getting right in her face, yelling at her, screaming at her, threatening to beat her up. At this point, Liz should just clip her. Angela's 57 and she's a big woman, but I believe one body shot would cripple her. You have to do something to break the situation up. Also, how unfair is this for the normal guests of this hotel? TLC didn't rent out the entire hotel. There are normal people staying there. Poor little Timmy couldn't wait for his family vacation to Florida, but in the middle of the night, he got scared it in because he looked outside of his window and he sees Angela trying to fight Liz. Cry now. Cry now, bitch. Nobody's Looky here, folks. Angela's pulling in Ed by calling Liz a bitch like that. She's like a stinky hobo's ball sack that made a wish with fairy godmother to become a human. Fact is, from the second that Angela Dean got this close to Liz, it became self-defense. It actually gets to the point where Angela's pressing her face against Liz's and screaming, When did I ever talk over you? When did I ever talk over you? You're doing it right now. This isn't Jerry Springer. You're on a couple's retreat. And the fact that you are allowed to do this and still be on the show is crazy. And the fact that the camera crew let it escalate to this point, they should be ashamed of themselves. No one deserves to have a violent woman run up on them at a couple's retreat. Liz, Angela has placed her face in the fade zone. Fade her. After letting this drag on way too long, Ed finally comes over, pats Angela on the back and says, Angie, shh like a weak little suck. Buddy, are you serious? You are ready to show Kelly your Aikido moves, yet when it comes to defending your woman, you're a soft little cuck. Hey Edward, I thought you were trained by Master Shifu himself. Why didn't you show Angela your Aikido moves? For his training, that's actually what he does. He watches Kung Fu Panda on repeat and eats a whole bunch of McDonald's like a fat little fuck. <laughs>
we all deserve a partner like Evie from The Mummy too. Rick's getting dragged into hell. There's rocks falling from the ceiling. Evie doesn't care. Even though Rick told her, get out of here, save yourself. She loves him so much that she puts herself in harm's way to save her man. It should be the same way if the gender roles were reversed. The problem with your situation, Liz, is Ed would kick you into hell to save himself. Lizzie, you should want more for yourself. You're planning on moving to Arkansas with this man to live by his family. He won't even protect you. And the real reason why you caught this Benjamin Button and you're aging at such a rapid pace is because as much as you want this to work, you know deep down that he's not the right person for you. Y'all, Liz cannot catch a break. As soon as she's trying to get in her hotel room, she's got Angela screeching, I'll jump a bitch, I'll jump it orange bitch. Angela, on behalf of everyone that watches this show, why don't you shut the fuck up? The last person that should be talking about looks, you smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, you look disgusting, you look like Johnny Knoxville when he put on the grandma suit and pretended to be a grandma and jackass. Like, you don't even look real. And for Liz, it's out of the frying pan and into the fire because the next person she fights with is her fiance, Ed. You got what you deserved. That's what you got. You deserve that. Ask chilling. I'm serious. You're just mad because you got served. Ed actually said that, which is so cringe. I haven't actually heard that phrase since that old movie, You Got Served. If you got some spare change, check out our merch. If you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. Super thankful y'all watch my content. Comment below, subscribe. Let's be friends, let's be friends. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.